Good morning, guys. Hey guys. Um, it's it's almost summer. It's gonna feel like summer today. It is. We're gonna have a like end of school year water party at my house today. Fun. Yeah, it'll be great. Screaming girls. Yeah. Nine year olds. Awesome. Uh -huh. Okay. Anyway, so <laughs> we're what we're getting into. Anyway. We're, we've been talking kind of summer this month, and we have these awesome panels from Amy Smart that are made to make a bunting. And um, this one's called bunting. Actually. This is her summer we'll bunting quilt, which summer is summer bunting quilt. Different. We're not going to do a quilt. We're going to do more decor. Um. So. So we have bunting panels. Um. We this has with her Notting Hill line, so it's very uh, UK themed. So right. I get that it's probably not appropriate for the Fourth of July. There are other options. <laughs> I don't know. I might have right. to throw a UK theme party for the 4th of July just to irritate my neighbors or something. Um, <laughs> but you can make a bunting out of any fabric. Any fabric. So honestly, if you wanted to do a patriotic bunting, get a few quarter yards of like American gatherings. It'd be awesome. Another thing you can use to make a bunting is layer cakes because you have this huge sampling of fabrics. So you got, you right. know, your 20 different fabrics from the collection, like you can make a Halloween one. And um, just use the layer cake. So you got to get a yeah. Good get variety. a good variety. Um, but what we're going to be working on today, these are two panels. So Amy's panel that she designed that we're going to use today comes in two colorways. So this is the, I think it's listed as the yellow colorway. The pink and yellow versus pink the blue and, yellow, and green. Blue and green, though they all have all pink the colors. Pink and yellow and blue and green. But um, I've had a lot of people interested in this panel at the shop, but they're not quite sure what to do with it. So I'm going to show you what... I'm doing with it. Yes, okay, will. so what I have here is a full panel. Um, I went ahead and put some interfacing on it. This is actually medium weight fusible interfacing. It's really because it's what I had. A lightweight interfacing would be better because um, this is a little stiff. I did that simply because I wanted it to really keep its shape. I like the medium weight. I didn't it... want it to be really floppy. Um, so you can actually do it with no interfacing. I just chose to do that because I really wanted it to keep its shape a little better. Plus, you're not going to have to iron it every time every you time pull you it out. Every time you pull it out. Um, so, I just went ahead and fused the interfacing to the back of this. The interfacing, as it comes off the bolt, is wide enough to get all of these pennants, except for these little tiny ones on the side. So, I have some that over here, these are my little ones from the other panel. I have some like this that have no interfacing on them, and then I have like four that have interfacing on them. I can just take these and put it on some of my extra interfacing, or I can not put interfacing on them at all. It's really up to you. I haven't decided exactly what I'm doing with it. I'm thinking it'd be fun to have a cute little swag back behind my sewing machine on the wall. Yes, it would be adorable. So, but today we're going to use the big pieces. We're going to use of the, the panel. big pieces. So what you're going to do now? We've talked panels before. Are they printed perfectly? No. No. Are they perfectly straight? Absolutely not. Um, nor are these triangles perfect measurements. So <laughs> that's fun. But what I want you to tell you is to not get bothered by that. Don't get hung up on the fact that everything's not exactly perfectly measured because guess what? It doesn't have to be for this. So all I did with these ones over here is use my ruler and seriously cut out each panel on the edge. I didn't leave the white in between because like I said, it's not perfect. And I didn't want it to be like trying to leave a quarter inch all the way around and not have enough in some places and have too much in others. So you're gonna notice like her line, there's a little bit off the side here and off the side here, which is totally fine because it's gonna go away in the selvage. But she's right. not trying to leave it exact. Right. And uh, another thing... The way when we trimmed big panels the other, the other day, last week or the week before, whenever, right. we, a couple weeks ago when we did panels, um, I tried to leave my exact quarter inch all the way around to square it up. Don't got to do that with this one. No. Now, the other, another thing you can do here, and one of the gals at our shop is doing it with the ones she took home, is you can actually sew two of these together so that it's double-sided. Um, there are a lot of options there. You could totally sew around the edge, like a quarter of an inch in from the edge here, and then cut pinking with pinking shears around the edge and leave it kind of with that zigzag braid look. It would be really cute and 
Super simple. simple. Super simple. To do that, I would definitely use the interfacing though, because it's going to help it hold up longer. Yeah. And use the pinking shears because and use the then you won't shears. have it fraying for real. Yeah. I mean, you'll get you'll get the some fraying, but not crazy not fraying. Big frays. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I went ahead and chose a couple of polka dots from her Notting Hill line. That way she could use all the prints. I want from the I want all the pennants. I want as many pennants as I can get. So I went ahead and chose a couple of the polka dots to be my backgrounds. Plus, if I don't want it to be all angle file-ish for some reason, um, it's polka dotty. It can be all polka dotty, and that's fun too. So all I'm going to do is I went ahead and placed this on here with the right sides together because there's no point in having to turn it and pin it again. And I'm just going to cut my backing basically to size. These panel pennant pieces are about nine and a half inches tall. So, so I just cut some nine and a half inch width of fabric pieces because then I just have to kind of zigzag. I'm going to move this out of the way two sides together. And you'll notice I just cut that line. If I lay this on here, it might fit perfectly. It might not. It might not. I might have to skim off a little bit. And that's just fine. Especially I, because these don't have to fit in a block next to each other on a no, quilt. No, they don't. And that makes it extra awesome. I do recommend putting a few pins in it before sewing. This is a bit of a big piece to sew unpinned. Now, when I sewed them together, you can see from one of them that I've turned right side out. Because of the way I plan to finish this, I left the top totally open so I can turn it right side out. Having a big opening makes turning anything right side out easier. Plus, it made the sewing a cakewalk. Right. Okay. I'm going to turn this right side out. But before I do that, because we did a quarter inch seam, my seam ends right about here. And this is a lot of bulk to try and fit into that point on the end. So I'm going to go ahead and trim it fairly close to that just don't to get the excess off. It. Don't go all the way to the stitches or it's going to pull through. Now turning this right side out, um, it's easy to get it all bunched up. I have this cool little tool that's called a threadostat. It's actually just a hemostat with some extra with, grooves. Well, it, no, it doesn't have, it doesn't the, have the grooves. grooves. So it, they're really fine. It's a hemostat without the big grooves. Makes it really nice for pulling thread out of a machine that's jammed. That's why it's called a threadostat. I like it for turning my appliques it's a right great side out. turning tool. Too. Because when I need to get all the way to the point, and my fingers are little, guys, and my fingers don't fit that far. I reach all the way to the point, push this in, I grab it. And I've got a nice firm grip on it. These are better than tweezers. I was going to say. I used to use tweezers. And then I. And now, because it's a hemostat, it locks closed. It locks closed. I could like let go of this. And I just pull. And if you don't there. know what a hemostat is, visit your local hospital and they will. Yeah, your local. Yeah, my father-in-law has like 40 hemostats at home because sometimes they have to just be thrown out. I threatened to, um, when my son has a like snaggle tooth that won't come out all the way, I'm always like, I'll go get the hemostat. And he's, so my kids know what a hemostat is and they're kind of afraid of it because it means <laughs> Okay, now I have a turning tool. It works tool, really well which, though, better than pliers. Which is really nice, plus my hemostat is definitely cleaner than my husband's pliers. Definitely. Um, to get these edges, but getting this point, Ooh. I really, I don't want to just shove because sometimes what that does it is it pushes through. so much bulk in one spot that then it gets locked in. So I just like to use a sturdy pin. You'll notice I grabbed this little one, it's a bit thicker. Um, because I like to sew with these extra fine pins and it's really hard to pull on things with an extra fine pin without turn bending it in half. the pin. Um, so I have one of these heavier duty pins and I'm just going to get in here and just pull a little bit out. It, it's not going to be perfectly sharp because, well, there's a lot of stuff in there. So you could just get it to the point where you, you like it, which for me is about here. All right. You're satisfied with what you're doing. Oh, let me get now before I press it, I do want to take my little turning tool here and run it up against the side because I really want to make sure I press the side totally flat. It's really easy to let it be in like this and be turned over a little bit. And I don't I don't want to have it permanently like this with a bit of the blue over here and the white over here. Especially where one side has interfacing and the other side doesn't. Yep. One side is definitely So what I do is I just other. put my little turning tool, nice sharp, not sharp, but smooth angled edge right over there. And then I'm just gonna press that side down. Then I'm gonna 
come on over here because I'm right-handed. I flipped it over and I'm going to just do the same thing. And that'll give me a nice, sharp bunting blade. Now the next thing I did, because we see how we have these little dog ears up here, I want those to go away. So, oh, you're just going to use your rotary cutter. I'm just going to use my rotary cutter. I'll give you your bowl. And because some of these buntings I noticed had a slight angle to the top, I just straighten it off. And that's it. So that's how I went about preparing all of my bunting pieces. But we're not going right. to use this one right now. We're not going to use it. So now, how do I finish it? Well, I was thinking of a lot of different ways. There are a lot of ways. A lot of you can use string, ribbon, baker's twine, ribbon, grass green ribbon, uh, jute, uh, really? rickrack. There's oh, and we talked about rickrack for a second, but then I remembered that we got this awesome new product in at the shop. You know how Liz and I have talked about double fold binding before. Well, this is a double a fold bias tape. Double fold bias tape with the crocheted lace border, and I thought. Wouldn't that be cute on a bunting? And look, watch. See how it opens up? It opens up. Nice finished edges right here. All we're going to do is slide that in. And, and sew all the way down. down. And we do want to leave a bit extra on the end because... We'll start a few inches in. So it has I'm a hanging gonna, spot and right. so you can tie and a I'm knot. And I'm probably going to tie a cute little knot on the end and give me something to hang it on. So we're just going to slide it in and sew down the line. Though really quick, I should probably decide what order we're doing that in. Yeah. Well, I put a green one in on the far end right here. Okay. But you guys, you can pin these if you want. Actually, what I should have brought was some binding clips. Binding clips would be great would for this. Would have been this. the ultimate tool to have right so here. So at home, grab some binding clips. Use binding clips. All right. Sorry. Okay. So I'm just going to stitch one of these down, you guys. I'm going to come really narrow stitch. Yeah. Eighth of an inch. Ish. Less. Probably less. Uh, more like 16th right on the edge as if you're doing like a machine binding. Mm -hmm. Which as you guys all know I don't love doing but I do it anyway once in a while. I posted a picture. Oh look our bobbin ran out. Well good that gives me a chance to decide how these are going to go. Now I am going to go ahead and leave a little bit of space between each Ooh. one and by a little bit I mean like half an inch. But that is totally going to be a personal preference situation. situation. You do what you like, what, what I think what looks nice to you. The reason I want to leave a little bit of space is because it's really Oops. nice Oops. to be able to... That's why we were winding the bobbins on mom's other machine. Whew. Well, the needle's going to move because holy smokes. That doesn't want to... That does not want to twist. It's okay. Did you know there's actually nothing wrong with the needle going up and down? I know like there's that. not. It's just louder. Um, I'm going to wind this bobbin all the way so that we don't have to do this next week. Oh, that's a good idea. I know. Anyway, the reason I like to leave a little bit of space between is because that's when you get a little bit more of a swag when you hang it. If they're, be so if stiff. they're overlapping, it can be a little stiff and a little jagged. So this will allow us to get that bit of a swaggy look. Swaggy. Is swag. that a word? Swag's a word. Swag's a word. I don't know if swaggy is a word. I think I'm making stuff up. <laughs> Droopy? Droopy doesn't sound good, though. Droopy sounds terrible. We shouldn't call it droopy. But I don't know. It'll get that slidey... Curve? Yeah, there we go. Curve works. That nice, soft curve. Yeah, that's better. We can come up with words. Jen's good at words. She's loquacious. Loquacious. No, that means I'm talkative. The other benefit of using this is it is a bias binding, so it's done on the bias. Ergo, it does curve. And she uses words like ergo. Hey, it's a shorter word than therefore. It means the same thing. And yet she managed to stay in both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nerd. We know. If you don't know, now you know. Okay. We all good? Are we good? good? Are we great? Are we wonderful? Yeah, are ya? I don't know. Did I'm you get caught up? No, I got three. Oh, that's not caught up. But I that'll be a nice you. start. Okay. It's going to be adorable. Right? And I'm not even kidding about probably stealing it for my sister-in-law's <laughs> bridal shower. Because we're kind of going for English garden party theme. Oh, yeah. 
And uh, I think this qualifies. <laughs> I no? I think it probably does. I'll have to shock the other sister not into it, but. Oh. I don't think it'll be hard. No. See, this one came, like, the pink polka dot was on the front. So, this one's polka dotty on two sides. I'm being a dork and going through and deciding what order it all goes in. Jen pins things more than I do. Well, I, I like um, planned scrappiness. I like scrappy, but I like it to be intentionally so. Do, to do, to do. But yeah, I'm going to show you guys this in just a sec when I get through this third one and stop stabbing myself. You shouldn't do that. I do it all the time. It's true. Pretty sure my fingers are permanently. I don't know what you would call it. Scarred? Seriously calloused from being stabbed a lot. Ah, see, now I have an order. Does it look like there's an order? No. She has one, though. But there's an order there. Now I feel better. Anyway, not even joking. But you guys, it's this. And that uh, crocheted bias tape is about the cutest thing ever. See, and what I'm going to do at the end here is nothing fancy. I'm seriously just going to tie a knot. And then it'll be easy That'll to hang. will give something to hang on, pin on, and it'll just go up like that. Or we can be all polka dotty. But look how cute. On the back. Um, I'm probably going to use the same crocheted tape for the mini binding. It comes in several colors. So it's a Riley Blake product. Riley Blake, a Lord Holt, be in my bonnet. Yeah. Right now we have it in coral polka dots, red and white gingham, because that's adorable. Stupid cute. And then this blue... That cottage, cottage tiny daisy that's what that's called right so i'll probably get the red the, po the pink corally polka dot one as well for the other bite binding bunting bunting but there's plenty on there because there's six yards yeah on each spool so they'll be don't plenty know how much six bunting. yards is that would be 18 feet 18 feet <laughs> or three husbands or three husbands <laughs> sorry if you stack them on top you don't want to do that <laughs> anyway Sorry, we're dorks. Yeah, we are. Okay, but that, you guys, that's how we play with bunting panels and we make cute decorations. They're great for every holiday. I don't know about, I mean, I have little kids, so really we decorate for birthday parties. And I hate buying all the decorations and then throwing them all away to buy them all again. Right. Next year and the year after that and the one after that. So this is a great way to get decoration stuff that's reusable and sustainable and just freaking adorable. Right, and I mean, way fancier than a paper bunting. For reals, right? And after a couple birthdays, it costs less. It's true, <laughs> because holy cow, what I spend on birthday party decorations. Yeah. For reals. So anyway, this is the bunting. So these are the bunting panels from the Notting Hill line. We do have them still in both colorways. And um, we will. I'm going to get them finished and have them up at the shop if you want to see them here in the next week or so. And then this is the summer oh, bunting This quilt. is the summer bunting quilt from her. Also Notting Hill, also Amy Smart. Notting Hill fabric line. Um, and it's adorable too. It is absolutely adorable. Amy always comes up with cute things. You probably see her patterns everywhere, whether you know it or not. They're recolored. It's just Diary of a patterns. Quilter, if you don't know who Amy is. She's great. She's great. Awesome. Anyway, thanks might for have joining to us. summer one too. Yeah, right? Seriously. I might need to go get some quarter yards of red, white, and blue. Right? Yeah. It'd be adorable. So cute. Like, over, over my mantle, fireplace, right. and stuff. Anyway, we're having fun. We'll talk to you later. Have Bye a good guys. one. Bye.